League One. Last weekend they were back again, but this time the emotions were very different. Seth Conway was at Blair Road. Talking not wanting to commit too many men forward, but Russell's found a space in front of goal. Shot charged down though by Jarvis, and this is what Torquay feared, the quick counter-attack, and it is Dans who finds Williams. Four on four, Colchester getting a fifth man to it as Williams sees some space opens up, looks for the one-two, there's Dans! Marriott can save it initially, but he can't keep it out. And Torquay have paid the price for committing too many men forward, and Colchester have snatched the lead just before half-time. It's Colchester United one, Torquay United nil. After playing a good defensive game through the first half up until now, Torquay gave it away, and there was Dan's. And now Halford will look to set away Jarvis. Keith goes to the middle. There is Marino. Keith over the front, and the merest of touches would have surely taken it behind Andy Marriott and put Torquay United out of this game. Watson, the ball is on for Keith. Marino Keith here, clean on goal against Berry, and he scored! And Marino Keith, the former Plymouth Argyle striker, has put this game beyond Torquay. It is 2-0 to Colchester, but as results stand elsewhere, Torquay may have just got away with it and look like they will stay in League One despite this defeat, but it will be an anxious couple of minutes here at the end just to make sure that Milton Keynes have indeed dropped points this afternoon. Another free kick for Torquay, this time it is Craig Woodman to drive it in and scores! Craig Woodman finishing his loan spell from Bristol City, may have signed off with a goal. It may be just too late in this game, but if Torquay do in fact now stay up, that's not a bad way to finish the season. At that stage, it looked as if Torquay might stay up despite their 2-1 defeat, but then this happened. A late winner from Gareth Eds was enough to give the MK Dons a vital victory over Tranmere, leaving Torquay in the final relegation spot. And as the news filtered through to Colchester, the players and the fans were clearly devastated. Uh, that's what happens in football. And uh, been mad enough to know that, that uh, that's just how it goes. And uh, today, it didn't go for us uh, you know, in any shape or form. Uh, you know, the res other results didn't go for us either. And, uh, you know, that happens in football. And uh, I think the nerves got to a few people who didn't perform. They just didn't perform on the day. And, uh, yeah, and to be honest, it's, it's difficult to put your finger on it. And, yeah, you know, I'll analyse that, you know, later on. At this moment in time, it's difficult because you're so disappointed to, to analyse what actually happened on the pitch. And, and, uh, and to be honest, you're, you're a little bit in disbelief at the moment because, uh, you know, it hasn't really sunk in. Well, Dave Thomas has had a couple of pints during the ad break, so he's feeling not quite as uh, depressed. Dave, what went wrong? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> um, I thought you weren't going to answer it then for a minute. Uh, they had overcome so many tougher hurdles than that uh, in the last few weeks. Um, uh, you know, the win at Oldham, beating Milton Keynes at home, beating Port Vale. Uh, they'd played really well away from home in a whole succession of games, Sheffield Wednesday, Walsall, Oldham. And last Saturday seemed like a routine job. <laughs> That's why you're depressed. That's why. He's... Martin, do you think Torquay playing in League One, it was just far too high from? I mean, I'd like to see Torquay in I-League, but let's face it, they, they are a small club. They are. I mean, you could say probably for most of the season they punched above their weight, but you have to look at them as a side, and they're, they're actually a decent quality side. They play good football, they're a match for a lot of the teams in that league, perhaps didn't quite believe in themselves enough, but the other problem that they have, of course, is that they are not a big club in terms of gates, and when you see them playing against uh, the bigger clubs, you, you see the handicap under which they're operating.